Hi, my name is Jim, and I'm an idiot. Hi, Jim. Hey, folks, welcome back to Flucatronic. Um, I'm finally going to get uh, my flat wound strings on this Magic Fluke Timber Bass. Now, this is the third time I've tried to make this video. First time I realized I did not have my wire cutters and just had to quit. Second time I made a mistake that I have not made in 30 years. And that's what the uh, I'm an idiot stuff is about. And I'm gonna show you why I made that mistake after all these years um, again, and how you can not do that at your string change and also talk about these strings uh, in general. Now I've got, as you can see here, I've got the E and the A string already installed and we'll go through the D and the G strings. So first of all, let's talk about these strings. All right, these are flat wounds specifically made for the Magic Fluke. You can see they're Labella um, 49 through 109 gauge. Now these strings, if you go on the Labella site, are uh, you, you can find that same gauge flat wound strings for their normal short scale bass. So as far as I can tell, these are the exact same strings you would find on a 30 inch scale. The only difference, and probably better on the base, biggest difference is that the the wrapped part, you can see the blue um, blue wraps there, where it comes off of the flat wound portion just into a straight <laughs> straight steel portion. That is specifically engineered um, for the scale length of the timber, which is much, much shorter than 30 inches. Um, so you have to have that so that, you know, the wound portion um, and just the wound portion is touching the bridge and the nut there. And you can see it's very close up at the nut. Um, wound portion goes right up to the nut and just a hair over. So you can see why they had to be specially made from um, from Labella. So um, so to change these, you know, taking off the old strings, all you're going to do is uh, is you know just l lessen the string tension and take it off. Now my usual practice for string changes on on all stringed instruments is that I'll take one string off, leave the rest on, tune up that string, just that one string to the rest of the set, and, and then move on. Now, I started to do that on the bass here. So I took the low E string off, started the string on, and I don't know if you can see on that headstock, the, the next string over, the A string, is basically in the way if you're trying to string, um, string that on. So, I said, okay, no problem. I'll just take the A string off as well. So I did that and and then put the E string back on and started tuning up. And I said, hey, great. I've got an onboard tuner here. I'll just tune that straight up to an E. And there was my problem. <laughs> so what happened was I actually ended up tuning those two strings an octave too high because your onboard tuner is not chromatic. You don't know, you can't see what, you, you can't see what octave it is. And, you know, with, um, you're not going to be able to tell acoustic, acoustically real well either. So what I ended up doing was just cranking these things. And that should have been my first clue. Um, you do not need a lot of tension on these strings. As I said, they're the same as for 30 inch scale. So they're going to be quite low tension. So if you, if you feel your tuners are tight at all, then stop. You're doing something wrong. <laughs> That's what I did. Um, so... Amazingly, the E and the A strings got up there with a lot of cranking on, on those tuners, and I'm really surprised the tuner itself did not snap. But when I got to the D and the G strings, did the same thing, and um, it, again, had to really crank those and got all, almost up to the D, and it snapped. <laughs> so again, luckily the string snapped instead of the tuner. Same thing on the G. So. Um, uh, you know, said a few choice words and I uh, had to stop the camera on that too. <laughs> so after that, um, I 
happened to play the bottom two strings against the test recording I had done, and I posted that earlier with the round wound strings, and that's when I discovered, oh boy, I'm an octave too high. So immediately got those two down, got some new strings. I've got those in, and that's what we're going to cover today is getting the other two um, strings installed. So let's look. Um, now, so that's the first tip is that you, you want to install the outer string first, right? So that's the bottom tuner peg. And so on the, on the top side, I'm gonna to wanna to do that as well. I wanna install the EADG string, actually install the G string or the one string first. So let me look, show you this. The strings come like this, kind of wound up and you get a um, little bead on there. If you can see that, but that's a one little bead with a one on it. All right, so um, got my G string, and you can see here there's lots of uh, blue line. So we'll just take the bead off. And as far as installing a bridge, couldn't be simpler, you just flip Flip the base over, over. Put the skinny end through. And again, I'm doing the EADG string first. Just pull that through. And that'll seat right there on the bottom. Now, one tip when I did the E string, that is really tight. Um, so I did have to pull pretty hard to get that E. Um, uh, ball in through through there. The A string was much less trouble and of course no trouble on this one. All right, so if I show you the top of this without um, stretching, you can see that that um, blue portion comes right up to the nut. Now you don't want all this string. See this? This is like almost a foot of string left over. You're not going to want that uh, wound around the peg. So really what you want to do is take about about three inches beyond the tuning peg, which is about the length of a, of a middle finger, typically. So in this case, it basically comes right to the top of the uh, headstock. So you can basically just use that. So just kind of snip it. You're gonna need some wire cutters because this is <laughs> steel, um, steel core even. All right, so that's all that's all you need as far as wraps. And then I'm going to line up. Sorry, you can't see that. Just line this up. And you don't want to go all the way through, because again, this is not like a ukulele string. It's not going to give and stretch. Um, basically, when you get the slack out, uh, you're, you're there. So I'm going to um, just kind of Kind of get that there and start winding. Now, this may go off camera here because I can't support all this, but really I'm doing two hands here. I'm using my um, <laughs> left hand to turn the tuner and the right hand to kind of guide guide that string around the tuning post. And as soon as I get a little more tension on here, give you a look at that. Okay, that's starting to get there. I think that'll hold by itself. All right, so you can see there, it's not up to, to tension yet, but um, you see you're gonna end up with about three or four wraps around that post, and that's really all you need with this steel. Okay, so, all right, so as you um, start winding, you're gonna get the, uh, the slack out, and at this point, now's where you want to use some external reference. Now, like I said, on the E string, I did not have an external reference. And what I mean by that is, you know, another bass, um, a guitar, piano, chromatic tuner, some, something, um, to make sure you're in the right ballpark. So for this one, um, this is 
the G string. So I have another G note on the A string all the way up at the 10th fret. So here is A string. There's that G note. And that's really where this one should end up. So let's see where we are just... Okay, that's really low. That's good. All right, so let's just start cranking up a little bit, see where we are. So probably at a point where you could trust the tuner at this point. So let's see, um, let's see where we are. You don't hear this, of course, because I just turned off, or don't hear that. All right, so that's already at a low G. Let me just take, that's a high G, right? So you once you take that slack out, you're, you're just about there. So you, <laughs> you really should not be cranking at all. And of course, that's, a, that's high, a little bit high. Now, we'll just leave it there because obviously that's going to um, need retuning as we go. So that's that. Now let's go ahead and uh, same way we'll put the D string on. Okay, through the back. Whoops. <laughs> Don't want to leave that, uh, that bead on there. Point of that. Okay, pull through, taut. All right, so now, uh, don't make another mistake of just clipping this one at the at the, uh, at the headstock because that's a lot closer up there. So now you're going to want to take your three inches and we'll go about right there. Let's snip that. Same thing, line up, uh, line up that hole, just put it, slip the end through, and again, you don't want to go too far through. Slack out. higher so now now the a string is kind of my um external reference there so as soon as i get higher than the a string which i am um now i can turn it on turn the tuner on and i can trust that i'm in the right place so that's uh a already and i know i'm going to d D A D G, right? D. And there we are. Okay. Um, now, obviously, I'm just getting these strings on, so I'm not going to do a real extensive playing sample. I'm going to let these stretch out. And the other thing we'll do um, after these have been on a little while. And I probably won't uh, have a chance to come back and show you this, but we'll um, we want to set the witness points at the bridge and the nut, and all that means is you is you want to take. You really can't see it on the, as much on the thin strings, but um, maybe some other folks can uh, can show that better. But I can see it on the D string even even here. Is that what happens with these kind of strings? With the wound portion over the bridge, you're going to get kind of a, an arching effect over the bridge and a little bit also at the nut. What you want to do is just mash down a little bit, kind of gently take that arch out. You want um, just a nice straight line between the nut and the bridge. And what that'll do is that'll improve the intonation and the tuning. So um, we'll come back later with a full review and some better 
sound samples. Even the A, I, I have set the witness points, and they've been on there a while. I can tell you just a few very initial thoughts um, as far as the strings. Now, I, I love the feel of these over the round wounds. Now, the amp I'm playing through is just a micro cube, so pay no attention as far as tonality. We'll, we'll come back to that later as well. I just love the the uh, just the low tension and just the smooth feel of the strings. That's good. I will say that the intonation is not as good as the round wounds, and I don't think that's going to get um, better. Uh, like I said, the E and the A are, are have been on there almost a week, so I'm really not expecting the intonation to get a whole lot better. Um, so on the E string, here's uh, open string E octave. I'm having to go about halfway down towards the 11th fret, kind of between the 11th and 12th to get that intonation. And that was something that the Magic Fluke um, did warn me about, not warn, but inform me about before, before I got them, that these are really not recommended for a fretted uh, timber because of that issue. So that is something that I will have to get used to and deal with. Um, probably those of you who are experienced fretless will say, you know, that's just part of the territory. Um, but this instrument, obviously the bridge is not movable, so you're not going to be able to, to fix it that way. It's just something you'll have to, to deal with if you get these strings. Um, so this really is set up, in, in my view, is really designed and set up for the round wounds. It's probably the most ideal um, set up in terms of intonation, but um, if you want the flat feel and sound, this is and this small a package, this is the only way to get it. So we'll um, refrain from any further comments on that until we get a little bit further down the road, and I can give you some uh, more of a full review. So that's really all we were trying to do today is just get through the string change, and then we'll go from there. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching.